Hi, I'm Danny. I work with Professor Raghunathan Rangasamy at the Department of Chemical Engineering at IIT Madras for my PhD. I worked in the area of droplet microfluidics where I studied complex droplet behavior in 2D microchannels. In this video, I am going to give you a flavor of the droplet microfluidics research that happens in our group Sene. I will introduce you to the system's way of approaching the field and what we mean by complex droplet behavior. Then I will talk about my PhD work in this area which consists of agent-based models for droplet motion and the contribution we have made. Droplet microfluidics is the field of study that concerns with the flow of fluids in very tiny channels which are less than a millimeter in diameter. When two fluid phases that do not mix with each other like oil and water are flowed together, one of the phases breaks into a droplet while the other flows continuously. These droplets can be manipulated inside a microfluidic network where they can be processed based on need. They can be subject to different conditions, merged, split, synchronized, sought and incubated. The idea is to carry out several of these processes that are normally carried out in a lab on a very small chip that contains these channels. Hence they get the name lab on a chip technology. However, manipulating droplets through microchannels is not very straightforward. Droplets can interact non-linearly as they flow in the channel to exhibit collective behavior which makes design non-intuitive and challenging. Here are two specific examples of collective behavior in microchannels, specifically 2D channels. On the left is an example of self-organization of droplets, where droplets entering the channel at different frequencies form different layered arrangements. The one to the right is a case where droplets tightly packed in a microchannel undergo spontaneous destabilization by coalescence avalanches. A system's approach to the field would involve asking questions of design and control of these micro devices. When an experiment is carried out, what you essentially do is the forward problem where you operate the channel of a certain geometry with a particular set of flow rates. What you actually need is a solution to the inverse problem which involves identifying the design and operation of the device to achieve desired manipulation of droplets. In this case, it would correspond to getting a particular shape of droplet assembly or operating the channel under stable conditions which correspond to minimum coalescence sequence. To systematically solve any of these design and control problems, they are, they are posed as optimization problems. This typically involves the use of a model for droplet motion which is solved several thousand to a million times before the optimal design is identified. Hence, there is a need for computationally simple models as the existing CFD models cannot be used for the same. If you look at how some of the other complex collective phenomena are simulated, like say flocking of birds or schooling of fish, you would come across what is called an agent-based framework. Here the idea is to model the birds as agents that interact with other agents and the surroundings using simple phenomenological models or simple rules and then study the collective behavior of all the birds using a multi-agent model where these models are incorporated. Droplets can be viewed as agents which interact hydrodynamically with other agents and the surrounding continuous phase and boundary. The interactions can be modeled using simple models and rules and the collective behavior can then be studied. What you see here is an example of the agent-based models for droplets in a 2D microchannel. A MATLAB simulation shows that the model is able to capture the layering of droplets in the microchannel. We use probabilistic rules to understand the stochastic coalescence avalanches in 2D margins. Here are two realizations of the same where you see both large and small avalanches. By employing a Monte Carlo run, we were able to generate the probability of an avalanche as a function of its size and derive its size into the nature of the avalanche phenomenon. Now that we have computationally simple models, it is possible to solve some of the inverse problems that we are interested in by incorporating these models inside our optimization algorithms. Here is an example where the optimizer identifies the design and the operation needed to get droplets to form a particular shape, rhombus in this case. The idea is to fuse these droplets together to form the particles of this shape which is of the use in pharmaceutical industry. Here is another example where we build a classifier 
which is a machine learning tool. The idea here is to be able to predict the stability of a droplet assembly by simply looking at a snapshot of the droplet configuration. In summary, using simple models for complex droplet phenomena, we are able to solve challenging inverse problems in the field of droplet microfluidics. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you.